Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv and today I'm going to talk about how I built the file that I gave away on the first free file Friday. Alright, I gave you this little uh, bubble maker here where we have a Timeline Max instance that has tons of bubbles in it that are all animating in sequence. And each sequence of a bubble animating is its own little timeline as well. We're going to have a ton of nested timelines that handle these bubbles fading in and growing, and then moving up and zigzagging. Since all of this is nested inside of a timeline max, I can pause it at any time, and I can also reverse it. I can just sit back and watch all these bubbles go back to where they came from. And oh, what? I want to go the other way? There we go. Go back. So timeline max gives us a lot of control. And by walking through this file, hopefully you will uh, pick up on some of the tricks we can use when using timeline max. We'll be talking about the append method, the insert method, we'll be talking about doing some various offsets, and really the main focus here is going to be on nested timelines. So once I get to the end, look at that, little thing comes up, it's cool, and then we'll play it from the beginning again. So let's get out of here, and I'm not going to be able to talk about every little line in detail, um, but I'm hoping that within two videos here, you'll see how this thing is built. In this first video, we just want to get some bubbles <clears throat> on the stage and have them float up. In part two, we'll do the whole zigzag and talk about how the buttons are going to control the timeline. So here in Bubbles 1 Start, we're going to just go over some existing code that's all fairly basic. Uh, we're going to import all of our green sock classes. I'm going to set a variable that's going to keep track of how many bubbles I want to build. Right now, we'll just start with 50. I'm going to have my master timeline that's going to contain all the timelines of all the bubbles. And I have a create bubble function here, which is going to be responsible for placing a bubble on the stage, creating a nested animation for that bubble, and then putting that nested animation inside of the main timeline. Right now, it's just taking a bubble out of the library, placing it on the stage, and adding it to the display list. All right. Um, we have a random range function in here that's going to be responsible for generating random values because I want some bubbles to be bigger than others, some bubbles to be faster than others. So random range accepts a minimum and maximum parameter and it spits back some random value in between the minimum and the max. And then we have our init function which just sets everything up. And right now the init function is simply creating a loop that will call the create bubble function 50 times because that's what bubble max is set to. So right now if I test this Swift out, what you'll see is 50 bubbles randomly placed at the bottom of the stage. If I test it again, you'll see that they're always in different positions. So now that we've gotten bubbles on the stage, we're going to want to animate them. And just as a refresher here, um, I do have a symbol in the library that has, it's a linkage set up so that it's going to export for action script and it has the class name of bubble. So whenever I say create a new bubble, that means, hey, grab one of those guys out of the library. So this is the create bubble function. We're calling it 50 times with our loop. We're putting bubbles on the stage. Now for each bubble that animates, it's going to be fading in and scaling, moving up, and also zigzagging. So we're going to have a whole sequence of animation for each bubble. So in order to manage that sequence effectively, I'm going to create a new timeline max instance for each bubble. So let me just grab some code real quick. We'll come back here and it's going to look like this. All right. So I'm going to call I'm going to create something every time this function runs called my nested TL. That's my nested timeline. And this nested timeline is going to contain a series of tweens. Uh, let's just get every bubble to rise really quick so we'll have some fun. So I'm going to say, hey, nested TL, why don't you insert a tween max? So inside of the insert method of my timeline, I'm going to say tween max 2, and now another set of parentheses. I'm going to tell the recently created bubble that it's going to take right now, let's just say one second, and we're going to change the Y value. We're just going to do a very quick uh, 
let's do a y of negative 40, all right? So that's going to be above the top of the stage. That's what everything's going to be tweening to. And we'll do an ease, let's just say, uh, sorry guys, quad dot ease in. That means they're going to be starting very slow and then start speeding up towards the top. Now, once I've created this nested timeline, I also want to properly add it to my main timeline. Literally, what we're doing now is the equivalent of having a movie clip on the stage with a nested animation. And then if we copied and pasted those animations over and over again, this is what we would get. So I'm going to tell my main timeline called TL to append my new timeline that I created called nested TL. And with just this little amount of code, there's a lot of different things that we can experiment with. So you'll see that I have an error. So that's going to happen. That's a lowercase l. Bear with me. So here you'll see that each one of these bubbles animates in sequence. Now, one bubble goes all the way up, and then the next bubble follows it. And that's what happens with append. It will add the new timeline right after the previous element has animated. So it's literally saying, play the first bubble, then play the second bubble, then play the third bubble. On the other hand, if I used insert here, very important, wake up, you'll see that they all happen at the same time. Because with insert, it just says, all right, add this thing here, this nested timeline, exactly where the playhead is on the main timeline. And the main timeline, called TL, its playhead has never advanced. So really, we're putting all of these nested timelines at an insertion point of zero seconds. Zero seconds into the duration of that timeline. So again, you'll see that they all play at once. Now, append, on the other hand, says play them one after another. And that's what we're going to want to do. Furthermore, when we're appending things, we can also set an offset. So I'm going to add another value here and say 2. And what that means is that the first bubble will play, and then 1, 2, the next bubble plays, 1, 2, the next bubble plays, 1, 2. So this offset allows us to set sort of a delay between the end of one animation and the beginning of another. Now, I don't want to sit here all day waiting for these bubbles to rise, so another thing I can do is put a negative offset in. I can say negative 0.5, so that means wait. I'm going to say, hey, you know what? Let's put you in at the end of the previous sequence, but let's cheat a little bit and give you a 0.5 second head start. So now you'll see that once these bubbles, um, the next bubble in line doesn't wait for the previous bubble to totally finish, okay? It's happening half a second before it should have happened. Okay, and so that's pretty cool right now. So we got these bubbles to rise. Well, we also want them to fade in and grow. So I'm going to just uh, save you some headache. Well, before we do that, let's also randomize the speed of these guys growing. Okay, I'm sorry, moving up. So I'm going to say var speed is going to be a number equal to whatever the random range function returns when I pass in a value of 1 and 3. Okay, So my speed is going to be 1 or something between 1 and 3. All right. So instead of putting in the number 1 for the duration of my tween, let's use the value of speed. And now you'll see that some bubbles are going to go much faster than others. There's a slow bubble, there's a quick bubble. So we now have randomized our speed. We're also going to use this speed variable to determine how quickly, or I'm sorry, to what size these items grow. So I'm going to tell this nested timeline to also insert another tween max 2. Okay. And that tween max is going to tell the bubble to take, let's just say, 0.5 seconds. And now we're going to change the scale x to be 
that same value of speed. All right, it's kind of weird setting scale x to a speed value, but it works for us in this instance. I'm going to say scale y is going to be speed. So that means that these guys are going to grow based on this random value. So they're either going to grow to a scale x of 1, scale x of 1.5, 2, 3, or any number in between there. So check this out. If this speed number is 1, that means that we're going to be moving very quickly, only one second for that entire tween, but we're also going to have a small size. So the smaller the bubble, the faster it's going to grow. And this is going to be pretty cool. So now you'll see that that big bubble goes kind of slow, slow, slow. Come on, give me a small bubble. There you go. Fast, slow, fast, fast, slow, faster. Eh, okay. You get the idea. Big bubbles move slow. And we're also going to be changing the alpha. So let's set the alpha here and let's have some fun. Let's just do uh, a random number between, let's do uh, 0.5 and uh, 1. Okay, so now all the alphas aren't going to be the same and it's just going to give us that little random variance that brings us closer to reality. Alright, so here we have all the bubbles rising up and I would really like there not to be so much time in between each new bubble coming in. Now we sort of threw a monkey wrench into the works here by randomizing our speed because now our offset isn't always sort of the same. If our previous bubble took three seconds and then we are subtracting 0.5, that means that the new insertion point for our new nested timeline is going to be 2.5 seconds after the previous bubble started. Um, and that just means that we might have a very slow bubble going up and then the next bubble isn't going to happen until 2.5 seconds after it started. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of magic here. I know what the current speed is of my new bubble, right? And so what I'm going to do is say, let's use that speed variable and multiply it by point, sorry, negative 0.99. And what this does is it makes sure that each newly added bubble goes in pretty much very quickly after the previously added bubble. So here you'll see now that most of these bubbles start all at the same time. And by messing around with this number here, we can pretty much control the rate at which these bubbles start taking off and doing their thing. Let's just make that negative 0.5. So we're going to take the current speed value and subtract half of it. All right. And so now, eh, still kind of waiting a little bit. But again, you play with this number, maybe make it 0.89. And now you're going to get more bubbles happening at the same time. So we have a lot of control there. All right, folks, I'm going to wrap up part one right now. In part two, we'll do the zig and the zag or the wiggling of the bubbles. And we'll also talk about adding the controls. Oh, don't go anywhere. Bonus round. All right, just realized, folks, that I don't want to see these bubbles initially on stage here. So we got a little fix for you. Come on. Right where we're calling create bubble. We're going to say that each bubble's alpha is going to start at zero. So now this is the magic you wanted to see. All right. Isn't that beautiful? Cool. Now you can go. Stay tuned for part two. It's right around the corner.